Hey, hey, remember me? I'd like a half pound box of plain chocolates, please. Look, Irma, I know this may not wash at Thrush headquarters, but I do happen to have a bus to catch. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ken. Only I've got to keep a breast of development, which you see. I've got what you call divided loyalty. Oh, really? It's my mum. She's still on about getting the shower, you know. My yeah. dad's, well, he's not very sympathetical to the idea, oh, you know. I see. I must say I can't really blame him because it's only last week my mum found out the bath we've got isn't a spare coal hole. Really? Did you say plain chocolate? Yes, yes I did. Uh -huh. Who's the lucky girl? Or are you giving these as a prize for the one with the cleanest exercise boot? No, no, it's just a member of the staff who's leaving. Nice, is she? Oh, we've always been very close, yeah. Oh, what's she like, this member uh, of the staff? Let's see now, she's got sea blue eyes, little dimples and she smiles and they, they fuller figure, but it suits her. Well, it does with some of us, doesn't it? Is she married? No, 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 she's unmarried. As a matter of fact, I shall miss her. But uh, uh, she's uh, leaving. She shouldn't really want to leave, you know, but unfortunately, you have to retire when you're 65. And uh, Irma, if I were you, I'd have those shells removed if I could get far better reception through the wall. Mm. Hello, Sammy. Oh, yeah. Hey, tell me something. You what? I said, tell me something. Like what? But when you stand next to me, close, like, you know, uh, have you noticed out? What do you mean, have you noticed out? Well, about me, myself, you know. Oh, I see what you mean. When I've been standing next to you yourself, like, have I never noticed anything, like, about you yourself, like? Ah. Mmm. Well, have you, haven't you? Oh, it's a very funny question to ask me that, Dad. I mean, with me being your own flesh and blood, like. Uh... What do you mean? Well, I mean, you're putting me in a very funny position, aren't you, really? I mean, those kind of things, they're more for your best friend to tell you about, aren't She's they? She's been talking, hasn't she? You've been flaming gottered, haven't you? <laughs> Who the heck do you think you're pushing? I don't know, she's this It's got a problem, you know, a very personal problem. <laughs> Where did this come from? What? This tennis sweet corn. Oh, um, Irma brought it round with the groceries. Oh, that's funny. I just didn't remember telling her not to bother. I didn't want any. Well, she said you'd said something. Oh, yes. Well, she didn't know whether you said you wanted it or you didn't want it, so she put it in to be on the safe side. She'd be selling encyclopedias door to door next, won't she? Oh, come she? on, Elsie. She did what she thought was best. It'll get eaten. I like sweet corn, That's you know. That's beside the point. I was telling that I... I'll do. Hello. Oh, hello, Albert. What can I do for you? Well, I, I would be right in thinking that you're still working in that rag trade over at Road yonder. That's right. Why? Well, I go to the right shop then, haven't I? I mean, you'll have some if anybody will. What? Rags? No, buttons. Shirt buttons. You see, I lost two off my best shirt. You know, Albert, they do sell buttons on little white cards by the dozen in button shops. Yeah, but there wouldn't be much point in me buying a dozen, would there? You see, I know but need to. There's a loony sort of logic in that if you want to think about it long enough. Here, these do you? Oh, those will be champion, yeah. You, uh... You wouldn't happen to have a length of white thread, would you? One length of white thread. There you are, Albert. Thanks. Now, are you sure that's all? No, I'd, I'd like a needle. What were your big hole in it? You see, my eyes aren't what they used to be. You wouldn't like me to sew them on for you while I'm at it, would you? I mean, I might as well, mightn't I? Oh, now, that is very kind of me, Elsie. You see, there aren't many good Samaritans left round here. <laughs> uh, not these days, no. And, uh, look, you needn't be too particular about it, you know. Pardon? I mean, about the washing and the ironing and, and things like that. I, I'm not in any hurry, though. Just do it when you do your own stuff, like. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at dinner time. And don't go to too much trouble about it, will you? I'll just have what you're having. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, a pint of bitter, bitter, please. Right, don't you? Oh, yeah. Right, Sammy Ogden, I take it you thought about what I said you had to think about? I thought about notes. I'll tell you what I told you this morning. There's a good bathroom upstairs, good enough for anybody. Ah, but there's a vast amount of differential, isn't there, between baths and showers? What do you mean? Well, er, uh, like safety first, for one thing. What do you mean, safety first? Oh, some very funny things has happened in baths, you know, what need never have happened at all if folk had had showers. Like what, for instance? 
Well, like them brides in the bath, for instance. Now, if them women had had showers instead of baths, he might never have had the idea in the first place. Oh, I don't know what you're making all the fuss about. I mean, a shower's very, very nice for a quick once-over. There's nothing nicer than a long soak in a soapy bath. Ah, well, but I'm looking at it from the hygienic side. I mean, there's some that's not so particular about their personal refreshment as others, isn't there? Uh, Stanley, what? you're not by any chance thinking of disposing of your elder in a bath of acid, are you? Stop putting flaming ideas in me head. Because if you are and you're looking for a willing accessory before and after the fact, not to mention during... Oh, yes, Mr Bishop. Pint of bitter, please, Betty. You did say a pint of bitter. That's right. Celebration, is it? Desolation would be a better word, Betty. Oh, dear. You saw Emily yesterday, then, did you? Fleetingly, yes. Did you show her the ring? Didn't get a chance. I was too busy dodging the one she was chucking back at me, mm. metaphorically speaking. Mind you, she was quite right. I should never have resorted to subterfuge. But you can't just let the whole reason for your existence just come to a dead stop like that, can you? Not, not without some final confrontation, you know. Why? What are you planning to do now, then? I'll just wait here until she comes in. And when she does come in, we're just going to have it out, one way or the other. Cheers. Oh, dear. Caught you. Oh. oh, hello, Lucy. Uh, have you ditched the car, then? What? Or would you like me to get you a one-way ticket to Rio on the next plane out to Manchester? What are you talking about? Well, from the way you came skulking in the back, I thought you might have done a mail van or something. I'm sure you find all this very amusing, Lucille. Poking fun at the misfortunes of others was always one of your less endearing traits, but I'm sure you'll understand if I don't happen to share in the general amusement. Nice, isn't it? That's a lovely greeting for your only daughter. Not so much about my own daughter. Every time you come through that door, you bring a pot full of trouble with you. And I don't suppose this is any exception to the rule. Is it or isn't it? No, it isn't. Oh, I didn't think it would be. Hey, Dad, you're surely not going to drink that. I'm not giving myself a blooming nose bat, am I? Well, not out of a saucer. Look, it's hot. Well, blow it, but don't drink out of a saucer. Cats drink out of saucers, not you, man. If I want to sup out of a saucer, I'll sup out of a saucer. If you've got something to say, say it. Oh. Hey, well, it's Norman again. I'm beginning to think there's something very funny going on inside his head. No, no that's just because he's taking up bowling. It's not just bowling now, it's wrestling. He told me this morning <laughs> he's going wrestling tonight. <laughs> wrestling? No, he must be a lot fitter than what I told he were. <laughs> What's he going to call himself? The mass marvel of the strong girl of Boston. Oh, it's no laughing matter, Dad. <laughs> you know as well as I do what that can lead to. What? Watching wrestling. You know as well as I do. It's not but one step from watching bare fellas to watching bare women. I suppose you know that uh, that plate you put me on chips on is stone cold. You don't eat chips straight out of the paper. It's low life. Oh, well, I always do eat them out of the paper. First, it saves washing up. Secondly, it keeps me chips warm, which is more than what your blinking plate does. I sometimes wonder how my mum ever put up with you. Yeah, when I look at you, I wonder how I ever put up with your mum because you're just two of a blooming kind. Now, look, will you stop flustering and tell me what you're after? Well, like I said, it's Norman. He says he's going out tonight to the wrestling with his mates. And you don't think it's his place? His place is at home with me. He's been out once this week already. Right, well, you'll have to make a firm stand then, won't you? How do you mean? Well, tell him that if he goes out, you won't be there when he comes back. Oh, do you think that'll work? It always did with me. <laughs> well, thanks, Dad. Look, I know we've had our differences in the past, but... Well, I always know who to come to. Yeah, I've noticed that. Oh, uh, before you go... Yes? Just get that cap and put it back on my head where you took it from. But you surely don't wear a cap to the table. I always wear my cap. But what for? Because there's a draught from that window and it keeps me head warm. Well, then, how are you going, or aren't you? Oh, 
I can see Stan now, striding through the yard gates eight o'clock every morning, blood surging through every vein, the new Mark II Stan Ogden. Eh? Tell me, Stanley they will say, to what do you owe this tingling freshness? Oh, it's nothing they will say. I just have a splash every morning in the shower that Ned Fairclough put in my bathroom. Over my dead flaming body. Well, it could be that way yet, Stanley. You know, your Hilda can be a very determined woman. Listen, I wear the pants in our house. Oh. You <laughs> but if you two have got any ideas how to get her off my back, you know. What's it worth? What? Getting Hilda off your back over this well, uh, shower uh, idea. A uh, pint for starters and... Uh, Loyal service down the yard for the next uh, 40 years, eh? Stanley, you're on. The US cavalry's coming over the horizon. Right. Uh, another pint, yeah. Mr Bishop. That's what I said. We've had three already. So oh, we're not back in the days of rationing again, are we? No, but the brown stuff that comes out of here has a very funny chemical effect on your bloodstream, you know. And you can spare me the impertinence, please, Lucille. <laughs> Don't tell Ernie, but she's been in again and gone out again. Again. Every time she comes through that door, I think she's going to start saying cuckoo or something. Emily. Yes? How much longer is this going to go on? Oh, sir, I can't see quite what business that is of yours. Well, of course it's my business. I mean, here you are stuck back here behind your sandbags. He's out there stuck out behind his, and not to mention those three empty pint pots. I mean, it's like being in no man's land in, on the sum or something. Well, I'm sorry, Betty, but it is a free country, and I suppose Mr Bishop has as much right to drink here as I have to avoid his company, if I should so choose. Emily. Yes? Last night, when he asked you around to look at those files... Oh, there was absolutely no problem with the files. That was simply a cheap trick to inveigle his way back into my company. But he had something for you, something he wanted to show you, but you never gave him a chance. Oh. Yes, it was a ring. A beautiful diamond engagement ring. <laughs> OK, kid, what's the damage? What you owe me are together, ooh, £2.50. Oh, but there's these sweet corn to go on now. Oh, you're charging me for that, are you? What do you mean? Only I distinctly remember saying yesterday that I didn't want any, that's all. Well, I couldn't remember, so I thought I'd better play safe and put some in. You can bring it back if you like. No, it's all right. It'll do for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Is there something special about tomorrow, then? Don't you know? No, should I? Well, I don't know about you, but I know somebody else who should. I wonder if you remember. Oh, Hello. Are you here, Vernon? Not that I noticed one. Well, they should be. Anyway, I've got to dash. Security's got his beady eye on me. Turn on. Yeah. What was all that about? You tell me you're married to her. I'm just the one who gets me tail twisted for sending sweet corn she didn't order. She told you off about that, did she? What, with knobs on? I'm sorry, love. Um, I'd like a box of chocolates, a fancy box, if you got one. Oh, not you and all. Why not? Oh, all of a sudden, everybody round here wants boxes of chocolates. Well, like who? Like Ken Barlow, for instance, you know what? He's got this mad crush on this teacher at their school and she's 65. <laughs> well, it takes all sorts. Are they fancy enough for you? Yes, they're fine. Right. Have you and Elsie been having words again? No, why? No, every time David bought me a box of chocolates, it was because he'd been um, doing something wrong. Well, these are for tomorrow. What's about tomorrow? It's our wedding anniversary. Oh, I see. That's what it is, then. That's what what is? Nothing, nothing. It's just something somebody said. Come on, I want 75p. Thank you and good night. Don't be so mean. <sighs> What's 75p for an anniversary present? You sent to the card? No, but I'll have to, won't I? It's just one big racket. You men. Honestly, you're not a bit romantic, are you? Hey, you. You're out of the fine. And Albert Tatlock, when it's his round. Come on, what's up? Oh, nothing. I just want to bring a bit of sweetness and sunshine into your life. What's it going to cost me? Oh, a couple of bevies at the Rovers and your entrance fee. Entrance fee to where? Well, this afternoon is your afternoon off, right? Your afternoon? Yes. Yeah, well, you see, to keep you out of mischief, I've told they'll say I'm taking you to Old Trafford to see a bit of cricket. No, ma'am, thank you. But you like cricket? Yes, but not today. Well, you've got nothing else on, have you? Exactly. Ever since Ken left here, I've been working like a horse in that garage. I promised myself on the first day... I could take off, I was going to go home and kick my shoes off and put my feet up and relax in front of the television set. You can relax at Old Trafford. Not with the same degree of comfort. 
Oh, and I've taken the flipping afternoon off now. Well, you can go, Len. It's not the same by yourself. Hey, darling, you wouldn't like to spend a, an afternoon in the sunshine at Old Trafford, would you? Oh, no, thanks, Len. Nothing personal, like, but I've always found cricket very depressing myself. Depressing? Yeah, a bit like a funeral, only it goes on longer. Is she with you? No, I hope she was with you. Listen, if I come round that counter, I'll be with both of you. <laughs> promises, promises. <laughs> Oh, uh, hello, love. I was uh, just looking up a number. Really? Yes. Are you off out again, then? That's right. Um, Emily. Yes? It's a lovely ring. As far as I'm concerned, it can be the star of India mounted in sapphires and rubies, Betty. I realise, of course, that women of my age are expected to commit everything short of mass murder to get a ring on their fingers, but I'm glad to say I'm not quite that desperate yet. Now, if you really must get involved, I'd be very glad if you'd take a look in the bar and see if Cerberus, the three-headed dog, is still guarding the gate. You are? Mr. Bishop. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I bet that cost a bob or two, didn't it? I don't mind telling you, Stanley, I didn't get much change out of £100. Get away. All of the best for Emily. That's what I said when I saw it. Only... Born to blush unseen, Stanley. Oh, she turned you down, did she? Let me down would be more appropriate, Stanley. Left the shop. Deserted me. Left my side when I needed her most by my side. Ah, oh, well, that's women for you, isn't it? You're not a church-going man, are you, Stanley? Hmm? Well, but on, on those holidays sometimes, you Good, because that makes you the ideal subject, doesn't it? A non-combatant, as you might say. What do you mean? short sermon that I've penned for next Sunday morning's service. I'd like you to give me your honest opinion on it, Stanley. Yeah. I'll get back to the yard, you know, earn me daily bread. No, 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 have another pint before you go. Well, go on, then. Two more pints, please, Lucille. Keep the change, Stanley. Where was I? Pardon? Oh, I know. The text of my sermon this morning is taken from the book of Psalms. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone, like the shadow that declineth. I am tossed up and down, like the locust. Up and down. Oh, Amen. <clears throat> I'll, I'll get the drinks. Like the locust. <laughs> Are you going busking then? No, 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 it's just a few things I've dug out for Dave and Tim for tomorrow night. Having another blow, you know. You're not having a go at that lark again, are yeah. you? Minnie Caldwell's never been the same girl since, you know. And there's another senior citizen who'll have someone to say about that. Oh, yes, he, uh, he wouldn't wear a flat hat and have a red handkerchief, would he? Oh, did he guess? Yeah, well, don't you worry about Uncle Albert. I've got the very thing for him. Oh, really? Yeah. I bought some cymbals home from college, and if he comes round objecting again, I shall ask him to sit in and play the cymbals. You know, people used to walk round for thousands of miles. He used to come round and see Uncle Albert play the cymbals. Right, I'll see you then, then. Ah, is that all, then? He'll do me, darling, just the girl I was looking for. Just a quick word with you. You know, um, it's about that shower bath you wanted installed in the shower, you know. Yeah. Oh, hasn't Stan told you? No. Oh, hey, it's all arranged. Ah, oh, he must have wanted to surprise me. Yeah, that's what he said and all. Anyway, there is one query, love. Oh, yeah? Yeah, do you want the 300 quid one or the 250 one? You want them? And the fitting charge, of course. That shouldn't be more than 10, 20 quid. Oh. Uh, has Stan actually put in the order for this lot, like? Well, this is what I wanted to talk to you about, you see. I mean, I was on the blow to the factory when he came in to order, you see. And I said, well, you might as well stick the 300 quid job on. But if there's a change of plan, I mean, I'd better get back on the blower and say not to put it on the lorry. Yeah, well, there has been a change of plan. Oh, you want the £250 job? No, we don't want any. No, what I mean is, Len, uh, there's been a mistake, like. But you wanted a shower in storage. Oh, well, yeah, well, that was before we took proper provisional advice. How do you mean, proper provisional advice? From the herbalist in what sells the corn plasters on the market. 
Advice about what? It stands glass back. You see, he said you, you couldn't have nothing worse for a glass back than to have uh, hot and cold water keep splashing on it. Oh, Stan won't mind. Oh, no, he's only said that for my sake. He's very self-defacing, is Stan, you know. No, no, I, I wouldn't feel happy having him on in the house knowing that Stan might invalidate his health every time he used it. Well, I'll see what can be done to stop it, love, but I make no promises. <laughs> And that takes him to within two of his fifty. Smith still bowls over the wicket. Like he never pitched. Ooh. Really got the Hello. Hello, Emma. What can I do for you? Uh, it's this cream cake, no. Emma. We've gone and got lumbered with it. Just a minute. You see, somebody doesn't eat it when well, it'll only go bad, and I thought you and Elsie might like it. Well, it's very nice of you. Thank you very much. Right. Well, if you don't like it, you can always chuck it at one another, can't you? Uh, I'll put it in the fridge. It's just the tail end of the cricket. Is it um, any good of a game, is it? Well, that's getting rather exciting, yes. Well, I have to take your word for that, I'm afraid. Cricket always has the same effect on me as sleeping tablets. Still, I suppose it helps if you play the game yourself. Yes, it does. Yeah, and you do, I suppose. Well, I used to, yeah. I bet you look dead cute, really, in your little white shin pads and your cricketing cap. We didn't have any shin pads and cricketing caps when we played cricket. You couldn't play cricket with the sun in your eyes, you were a sissy. Mm. What position did you play, or is that an ignorant question? Oh, I was a batsman of sorts. Don't you play anymore, or has Elsie put a stop to all that? No, Elsie wouldn't mind. No, I'm just getting a bit old for it. I prefer the spectator sports now. Oh, you're not. A fit fella like you. I mean, well, I bet there's not an ounce of fat on you. Well, I wouldn't bet too much on it. I'll be going now, then. We'll yes, only get we'll ourselves be. talked about, won't we? Yes, we will, won't we? Yeah. Well, they say there's one thing worse than being talked about, and that's not being talked about. And what do I owe you for the cake? Oh, nothing. I was glad to get it off my hands, really. Oh. You better tell Elsie that I brought the cake round as a peace offering because I made a mistake with the sweet carne. Eh? Yes, all right. Tell her that. See you. See you. I mean, you've been in since 11 o'clock. Go on, get off on, give me some. Go on, try it up. See you tonight. Ernest Bishop, haven't you got a home to go to? Home is where the heart is, Betty. I don't suppose you would like to hear my sermon for next Saturday in the morning, would you? No, thanks, love. I've heard it three times already this dinner time. So, come on, let's have you. I mean, it's half past three, and if I don't get this pub locked up, somebody will be round here to lock me up. Funny. Never realised before how ridiculous they are. What? The English licensing laws. Not from where I stand eight, eight hours a day, they're not. <laughs> There's some folks never want to go home, and I never thought you'd be one of them. Home is where the heart is. You said that. Have I? Come on. I'm gone. You look as if you've already gone. Mind, what would your Emily say if she saw you in a state like this? She's not my Emily, though, Betty, is she? Not anymore. But she's not going to escape me as easily as that. I shall haunt her as, as Heathcliff was to Catherine Earnshaw. So shall I be to Emily Nugent. <clears throat> At what hour do you reopen these premises? Half past five. Right! Till half past five. Mm -hmm. On a warm, clear night, you should take a walk to the edge of town. Climb the highest hill when you reach the top, take a look around. Hello, Dad. Now, what the blue? I said what you said I should say to him about me leaving him if he went to the wrestling. Well? He went. 